Hello Dragons, my name's Nick Cross, this is Richard Haddon and Sebastian Stoddart. We're looking for £50,000 in exchange for 15% of our business. Barmate, like some good ideas, is a result of an evening in the pub in my student days. It was four deep at the bar and I was wondering why does it take so long to get served? So I watched the bar staff and I realised that they spend most of their time holding the pint glass. And I thought there's a huge efficiency gap there. If we designed something to hold the pint glass for them, that would free up their time so they could do other things. So I got in touch with my friend Seb, who's a product designer, and he's going to explain where we are now. So you take the pint glass, you lift up the tap, put the pint glass in. I can then go and take the uh, payment and then come back. The pint glass has taken care of itself and poured it up to a predetermined level, at which point I can come back and simply top it up. Our market is pubs, but in particular managed pubs, of which there are 9,000 in the UK. Um, each pub will typically have between 10 and 20 taps that this is suitable for. Uh, that means a market between 90 and uh, 180,000 units. Thank you very much for listening to us, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Penetrating a market as established as the pub trade is a tough ask, even with the most innovative of inventions. But that's what Assured Trio, Nick Cross, Richard Haddon and Sebastian Stoddart believe they can do. In return for 15% of their company, they need £50,000 to take their prototype automated bar tap into production. Peter Jones is first to scrutinise the opportunity on offer. Guys, hi, I'm Peter. Um, before I start talking about that product, I want to talk about you. Obviously a product designer by trade. That's right. OK. And Richard, what do you do? I used to work in investment and then for the last five years I ran a biotech company up until the end of last year. And Nick? I'm an architect and I've got a small practice of four people in central London. OK. When I look at the product, um, I mean, I've worked in a bar. What you tend to see with barmen is they get the glass, put it down, pull the tap. They're still getting other drinks. They just keep an eye on it and flick the tap off and then come back to it. They're actually multitasking anyway. So how can you convince me that actually somebody's going to replace an existing pouring tap? And the current system of trying to sort of manage that without having incredibly flat beer, because obviously if you pour directly into the glass from a height, from a height it'll just foam everywhere. So what they currently do is they have to raise the glass to the correct height. So typically they take a normal pint glass, they reverse it, and they stick another one on top, which isn't a realistic solution, really. Right. And what do you think you'll be able to sell that for? Uh, we plan to sell it for a unit price of £90. Uh, we think it'll take about two months to recoup its costs for the pubs. We've been in to see Weatherspoons, and their biggest complaint is customer waiting time, and they're interested in this. So but they're going to spend 80, 90 pounds. Well, they're already spending between 30 and 70 pounds on a normal tap anyway. Okay. It's certainly early days for the business, but such interest from a major chain of pubs is bound to be of interest to an investor. Former football club chairman Theo Pafitis is next to question the confident trio. Guys, hello, I'm Theo. I've had to manage a business where you only had a very short window to get all your customers through, half-time, just before the game. And the biggest problem was speed of delivery of the beer. Now, really, how much time are you saving if you look at managed pubs, for example, when you have very, very busy times, you might have four deep at the bar. Someone walks up and asks for five pints of lager. What happens is they stand there holding the first pint, they put it down. Stand there holding the second pint, they put it down. This is a long process. It takes, on average, 19 seconds to pour a pint. That's minutes, because it frees the barman up to do other things. Nick, Richard, Sebastian, hi, I'm Deborah. Uh -huh. um, this £90, how far have you got with, with establishing how that would be made, the material it would be made in? We have a complete quote for its manufacturer and we've made allowances for the cost of shipping, importation, VAT, and uh, of the £90, there's also a cut for distribution. We, we've worked out that gives us a good, a good gross profit. So what are they going to cost you to make? Uh, we'd have a gross profit of 75% on the £90. Sorry? We'd have a gross profit of 75% on the £90. Poised responses and a potentially profitable product, the entrepreneurs are putting on a good performance in the den. 
but Hilary DeVay looks to have something on her mind. Guys, I've been in and out of pubs all my life, and I was pulling pints illegally from the age of six, seven years of age. And to be honest, if I'd got bar staff that couldn't add up the order in the head, open a bottle, put it on the counter, pour a spirit or, or a glass of wine, and then deliver the pint, then, frankly, I'd think they were badly trained bar staff. I've got to say, I'm out. It's a first blow for the trio. Will Duncan Bannatyne agree with his rival's concerns? I think you guys are great and I'd love to invest with you. But if this really does work, all you need is to get one of the big brewery chains involved with you, work along with them. I'm sure giving them first mover advantage where they get the first order or giving them a license, I'm sure they'll snap your hand off. But it's not for me and for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Guys, I think it's a great inventive product, actually. I think it's, it's nicely designed. I, I'm concerned about the cost. I think that when you go into negotiations to replace all of the taps, I think you'll end up almost having to give it away at cost. So I'm going to decline the investment because of the margin pressure I think it will come under when you try to put it into the market. I wish you the best of luck, but I'm going to say to you I'm out. Two more dragons out. Can leisure industry expert Deborah Meaden find a reason to invest? One of the issues with speed pouring is you get an awful lot of wastage. How does this affect that? You don't have any wastage because you're setting the level the pint stops at. So if you happen to have a barrel that is at a slightly different pressure and you find that it's frothing over, you can just adjust it so it sets at a lower level. Where do you adjust that? And it's a simple ring to adjust the pressure that it comes out at. Have you got a patent? We do have a patent. Patent granted. Yes. For what? It's a UK patent and it covers the notion of uh, a device which holds a glass at an angle which declines as you fill it and eventually actuates a valve to stop the filling. And who owns the uh, patent? I do. And would you be prepared to transfer that into the company? Yes. Guys, has anybody said they will give you an order if this works? We have a, a pub chain who's willing to trial it. How many? There's 15 pubs. So obviously they'd start with a smaller uh, number to test it and then they'd roll it out if it was successful. And when we saw Weatherspoons, they said that they'd trial it in their headquarters pub on site for us. Well, listen, I think it's, um, it's a good idea and I could see exactly the minute you showed it, I could see how it would work with the weight and everything else. Um, I'm going to make you an offer. The full money, but I'd want 25%. At last, Nick, Richard and Sebastian have the offer they came in for. But it's for nearly twice as much as they initially wanted to give away. With one dragon remaining, will they be able to negotiate themselves a better deal? I consider this quite a punt. It's early, you know, you take it out there and somebody says, Oh, no, we've got one of these that does that. But I am going to make you an offer. I'm going to make you an offer for half of the money. Actually, on the same terms that Theo was talking about. So we've now got two decisions to be made. Does the dragon to my right, would he consider taking a partner? And would you consider taking that offer? We'd quite like to go into a huddle and talk about the offer. OK, thank you very much. It's an unusual occurrence in the den. The entrepreneurs still only have one full offer on the table for 25% of the business. He's not going to take his offer off the table, so we can suggest that. But I'll be about to take it. Okay. Will they choose Theopophytis on his own? Try and convince him to partner with Deborah Meaden? Or will they choose to go with no dragons at all? 
like so. Uh, if you were to share your investment with Deborah, so that there's less capital at risk for either of you, we would like to suggest that you both invested £25,000 each for 10% each, so overall 20% rather than 25%. That's really good logic, but it's such a small percentage to have. And my logic said, well, if you've got two dragons, especially with Deborah's experience in pubs, clubs and marketing, maybe the right figure should be 30%. So we've got 15% each. You need to think about that, because if you've got two dragons, what that gives you is a lot more firepower. Deborah, how would you feel about that? Absolutely, and I'd be happy with that. I prefer our huddle. <laughs> you prefer our huddle? <laughs> it was nicer. Is your no. original offer still on the table as well? Yeah. Thank you very much. We would like to take the offer of 30% uh, split between Theo and Deborah because we didn't come here just for the money. Fabulous. We came here. Excellent. For the dragons as well. Well done, fellas. 10% of the And we didn't want to be home wreckers. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Richard, and Sebastian have done it. For 30% of their business, they've gained £50,000 and two multi millionaire business partners. It seems slightly counterintuitive to give away more, but we got two dragons and we thought that's got to be better than one. I think we might go for a drink. That was the next thing we'll do after the den. And then Seb's got some work to do to make the uh, production version. I have. Incorporate a company for the five of us. There's five in this marriage. <laughs> <laughs>